now that we have our good looking website, the last thing we should do is deploy it, right? Let's deploy this application to production and we're gonna host it with Firebase. Now Firebase is a Google platform that helps us host our JavaScript applications. It has a very cool real-time database and it's very good to use as the backend for our applications. We don't have to use all of its features. Check out all of its features here. Real-time database, crash reporting, authentication, Google Analytics. What we are interested in here is hosting. So for hosting these simple applications, it's going to be free. Go ahead and create an account on Firebase. Go to your console. Here is the console for Firebase. We're gonna start up a new project. We'll go add project. And we're gonna say my first Angular site. Create project. Once our project is ready to go, hit continue. And you'll see from here, this is everything to get started with Firebase. Now there's a lot going on here. I actually really like the blues they used, but on the left side here, develop, we have authentication, database, storage, functions, and hosting, which hosting is the one we want here. Once we start building out more advanced applications, we can add authentication through Firebase and that gives us social authentication. We can add a database here and storage. And this is cool because we don't have to worry about deploying a database, uh, working with authentication. Firebase handles all of those things for us. We'll go into hosting and let's get started. And it gives us the instructions right here. We're gonna install the Firebase tools. We'll go back over, close that out, clear, paste, NPM install globally Firebase tools. Once we have Firebase tools installed, we'll clear this out and we'll go back to the window, hit continue, Firebase login, Firebase initialize, and then Firebase deploy. So those three commands are gonna be good enough to take our Angular application and push it up to production. That's easy enough. So let's copy this Firebase login, come back over, already logged in. You'll just have to go through that process. Good stuff. So we'll come back over here, Firebase init. Am I ready to proceed? Yes. Here are the things that we need. We'll just press arrow down and hit space on hosting because that's all we need here. Which application do we want to use? We'll scroll down. I got a lot of them. My first Angular site. Here we go. Press enter. What do you want to use as your public directory? Now, this is important to change because public isn't where our final production files are going to live. Our files are going to live in the dist folder. That's where Angular CLI builds our files to. That's what we'll use, D-I-S-T. Are we a single page application? Now what this does is any routes that try to visit our website will always be directed to index.html. And that's how you route to a single page app, whether it be Angular, React, whatever it is, you always route everything to the one file and then the JavaScript takes over and routes to the specific page they wanna go to. So we'll say yes. All right. That creates two files here, and let's go take a look just to be sure what's going on. Close that, Firebase RC, and it says our project is my first Angular site. Very good, Firebase.json. The public folder is going to be using dist. Ignore files, rewrites, all routes are gonna go to the index.html, and that's that rewrite for funneling all data to that index.html. Okay, so that is good enough to go. The last thing we need to do is ng build for production. We wanna make sure that our dist folder has all of the latest and greatest things that we've built. Finally, once we're done with our production build, clear, Firebase, deploy. And let me just double check. Yep, Firebase, deploy. Deploy complete, nine files uploaded successfully. Come back over, finish. And notice you can see all your deployment history on the dashboard as well. So right now we just deployed uh, March 4th, 5, 11 PM. And you can see that up here, nine files, very nice. This is going to be our URL. And if you wanted to, you could go buy a domain and connect it here so that your custom domain points to your Angular application. Open this up. And here is our app, live and ready to be shared with anyone you want. Home, 
contact form, users page, calls the GitHub API, just like we expected it to. All right, just like that with the Firebase tools, we just use the Firebase init, Firebase deploy, and we're good to go. Now, one thing I want to show you is a little shortcut. It is kind of tedious to say ng build production. And then once that's done, you're going to Firebase deploy. We'll just add a script to package.json. Up here, scripts, we'll call it deploy. And this will be ng build for production and Firebase deploy. And this is just a shortcut to do. So if we add that and we say npm run deploy, it'll run both of those commands and deploy our website for us. All right, that'll do it for Firebase hosting. I wanna take a step back now and let's talk about the foundations of Angular. And I'll, we'll just have, instead of slides, we're gonna do this right in our editor. So the way that Angular works is it has a couple different concepts around it. And the first one is going to be modules. Now modules are gonna be the way that we can organize parts of our Angular applications into sections. And if we open up app module and zoom out, since that is giant, let's zoom out a little, okay. Now what happens here is we have our imports, our ES6 imports, and you'll see a lot of ES6 imports in Angular. You'll see it a lot in React. That's just the way that the JavaScript world is moving. And I really like the import statements because instead of just trying to grab things globally, like if you're using jQuery, you just use dollar sign and maybe you didn't load the jQuery library yet, dollar sign wouldn't work. But here we'll know exactly what we're using. Now declarations, we're using app component. Imports are the modules we're importing. Providers are services. And Bootstrap is what's going to start our application. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really, an ng module, and this is what's called a decorator, and a decorator is a way we can add extra metadata to this class. So instead of configuring all this stuff inside the class, we can say declarations here, we're just adding a decorator here, so this kind of tells this class what it's going to be using. So we have our main app module, and this is where we're going to register everything for this main part of our application. Now, the cool thing is, is you noticed that when we did our demo, the user section was lazy loaded. We told the user section, hey, load this user's module, which we'll create in a later lesson. And that's how lazy loading works. These modules help Angular to know what sections are what in our application. So if we want to use something, just remember to register it in a module, and then our Angular will know that it exists and know how to use it. Let's step forward into our component. And here is our component template right here. And actually, let's show this off. We're going to open up our, well, let's exit out of this. And I want to use the built-in VS Code terminal. Now, my Angular site, the way that we run an Angular application, if you're using the Angular CLI, is ng serve. Now the Angular CLI went and served our application. It built out five files, inline, main, polyfills, styles, and vendor. And then we can go over to our Chrome localhost 4200 is where our Angular app gets started. And here is our main app component. You can see welcome to app. Let's split this out to the right. We'll split this out to the left. Close that, close this. And the cool thing about the Angular CLI, as soon as we save any files, it will automatically update the browser. So this is our full template, and this is a lot of stuff here. We're not even gonna need this. Let's delete all of this. And the router outlet is needed. That's where our routes are gonna get output to. And we're gonna say, hello, I am an Angular application. And for fun, let's do an emoji for fire. Save and then watch the right side immediately get updated. So Angular CLI handles all of this for us. It's using Webpack under the web. It's using Webpack Dev Server to do all of this hot reloading and fun stuff. So that's what the Angular CLI does for us, right? We start up our application with one line and then we serve it with one line and then we can just start working and it automatically updates. But this is going to be the 
foundation for an Angular component. We have our component decorator, and then we have our component class and our template. And we'll see how we can build out more components really soon, but components are a really good way to build up our application into modularized parts. And then we'll look at our app routing module, const routes. This is where we're gonna be writing out our routes. And the cool thing about TypeScript, if you're not sold on TypeScript, and I wasn't at first, but now I'm a really big fan of TypeScript. Where did that come from? TypeScript, by typing things, it helps you to find errors quickly. And also it self-documents your code. So you know that these, this routes, and you could totally do it without the typings, right? You can say just const routes is equal to, uh, I don't know, let's write in some random path is going to be blank and the component we're gonna use and here, let's talk about component name. We'll say home component. And that'll be something we build, right? But if we don't know what's going on in this routes, okay, path, component name, this probably won't work because it won't work. We would have to go into the Angular documentation, find the routes documentation, and figure out exactly what to call this route, how we would create this route. But since we had routes here, and we'll click save. Angular and TypeScript can tell us that we're already making errors. So if I hover over this, it'll say component name is not assignable to a route. Oh, okay. Well, let's try a component. Okay. So we'll delete that. Component is now normal. No errors there. If we go to home component, cannot find name home component. So this TypeScript is really, really good at finding errors for us before we actually go to our browser and have to inspect element over there. So if we do this and I start typing, let's delete that. If I start typing in component, Angular and TypeScript already know, hey, do you wanna use components? So this is what we call self-documenting and the typings from TypeScript help us build faster. So we'll say, okay, I want component, home component, and we haven't defined that yet, but that's kind of the idea behind TypeScript is by using types and saying, oh, this is going to be of type routes, this array, it helps us to build faster because our documentation is right in our editor. So that's the routing module. And then notice we have the router module. We're exporting the routing module. And if we go back to, I don't, do I need to save that? Yeah, I do need to save that. So let's save this. Close that, close a couple more things. And let's go back into app module. Notice that our app routing module is here. So this ng module, this main app module is where we register everything and we'll see that soon. So this is kind of the foundation of an Angular application. You have modules, you have components and all of those get put together to build out our app. 